Hey, one last thing I want to go over in the macromolecules is to get a chance to take a look at how do we test for these things? You know, how do we know that things have carbohydrates or how do we know that things have proteins or lipids or nucleic acids? And we can perform several tests to do that. And I want to demonstrate just a couple of those for you today. The first one I want to look at is carbohydrates. How do we test for carbohydrates? I've got a piece of a crouton here and I've got some iodine and iodine allows us to test for carbohydrates. It actually turns kind of a uh, blue-black color if um, starches or uh, carbohydrates are present. So if I take a couple drops of this iodine solution and place it on here, right, you can see this is kind of an orangey brownish color, but when I place it on the crouton, you can see that it turned a very dark black or even blue color. That tells us that this tested positive for starches and carbohydrates. All right, so just one way of showing you how we can test for particular uh, macromolecules. All right, another one we could take a look at is lipids. And one of the old fashioned ways to do this, one of my favorite ways to do this, is the brown paper bag test. All right, you take the brown paper bag, you just kind of rip it apart. There are actually two ways to do this, and I'll show you both of them. Um, the first thing to te test for this is you're going to take some of the thing that you consider maybe having a lipid in it. We're going to use some vegetable oil. Uh, just take a little bit of that, and I'm just going to pour just a little bit of that onto a, or a whole lot of it. I'm going to pour that onto a brown paper towel, and I'm going to kind of smear that around a little bit. All right. And using the brown paper bag, you should be able to see, and I know it's kind of hard to see, oh, no, you can actually see that really well, how you can kind of see through it a little bit better than the, right. this is the regular brown paper towel or paper bag, and this is the one that has the lipid on it. So you can kind of see, you can see my hand through the brown paper bag. All right, that tells me that that's a positive test for lipids, lipids and the brown paper bag test. So if you can see through it, hello, then it is a positive test. All right, so just one way to test for lipids. The other way to test, is using solubility, is using the fact that oil and water don't mix. Okay, so we look here, right? You can definitely see there's a water layer down at the bottom, and you can also see, I want to get that on my laptop, you can also see there is a oil layer at the top and a water layer at the bottom. They do not mix, so that is a positive test for lipids. All right, so those are two tests that we can do, one to test for carbohydrates, and the last two tests we use to test for lipids. All right. The last one we want to look at is a test for protein, okay? And the test for protein involves the biurets. Okay, we use the Benedicts. We're going to be using the biurets, which is just a way to test for amino acids, all right? So I'm going to use some of this whey protein. Gee, I wonder if this has protein in it. We're going to use just a little bit of this, and we're going to put that into another test tube. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there, all right? So we got some whey protein in here, and we're going to use the Biuret solution. I can get the cap off. All right, and the Biuret solution—it's kind of a, a light blue color, and it will turn a violet or lavender color in the presence of protein. All right, all right. See right there. We got this nice purple violet color that tells me that that is a positive test for protein. All right, so we've covered several. We covered several different tests where we've tested for uh, proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Nucleic acids are a little bit more difficult to test for. If it was once living, you know that it contains a nucleic acid. If it was never living, it does not contain nucleic acids. All right, so we performed quite a few tests here, and hopefully you understand a little bit better about where you find macromolecules and how to test for them, all right? So we'll talk to you later. Have a good day, guys.